G'day my friends, Marty Ware here from martysgarden.com.au, the Marty's Garden Show with part two of the Worm Farm Guru series from Australia with Peter Axia, Australian Worm Farm Guru. Now in this video, we look at two different types of worm farms. Peter actually discusses a larger flow through worm farm, which is very exciting. You know, the ins and outs, the pros and the cons and things. And then he goes and takes you out into his backyard and shows you his underground worm farm and how he sets it up and how beneficial these types of worm farms really are in your garden. Look, you can self-fertilize your garden once these get going and they are awesome and I highly recommend both these worm farms. So watch the video, check it out, enjoy, leave any questions, comments down below and I'll get back to you for sure and I'll see you at the end of this video to discuss about the next one that's coming up. We've been collecting this seed and then re-sprouting it and putting it in our salad. Let's have a look at him. So in the last two videos, we're talking about the tiered systems, the worm cafe, and the can of worms. Now we're going to have a look at the hungry bin. This worm farm is the next size up in the series. It's a little bit more expensive, or a little bit. It's probably four times the amount of these little ones, but the plastic's a lot more durable. It's a bigger unit, and there's some other features which really separate it from the other worm farms. So this is what you call a flow through system. We don't actually have anything running, no baskets or it just flows all the way through. You can see that on the conical, it actually allows the worms to move up and they don't like when the material gets compressed. So the idea behind it is that the worms keep pushing up eating the food. Now we've got a tray down the bottom in which we can unclip at the sides. And that's how you can access your castings. Now because it's a flow through system, the idea is that by the time the castings reach the bottom, it's a finished castings. It also allows the water to, to drain freely through the system. And we have a catch tray, which we can collect the worm juice. I've set mine up a little bit differently today because I've got the three bins. I've set up a, a drainage system so that at the end of it, I can catch all my leachate in a bucket. Now this bin, because it can carry more worms in it, is ideal for anybody that doesn't want to muck around with the heavy lifting. Because essentially, this bin, you just open the lid, you throw the food in, and it takes care of itself. This bin does have a few issues in heating up, just because of the amount of capacity that it actually has. So through autumn, winter and spring no problems in summer you just need to be a little bit more careful and that might mean leaving the lid up at night time or pouring a little bit of extra water or simply just moving to some of the in-ground worm farms which we're going to talk about in the next video all in all i really do like this worm farm for its price and for its usability it's a really good worm farm all right so we just talked about the above ground worm farms. Now we're gonna talk about the in ground worm farms. These are one of my favorite worm farms because they're just so simple and because they're effective to use. Now, this is essentially just a cone or a bucket. You can do just about all sorts of different things with these in ground worm farms. These are a purchase product. And the reason why I like them is because they're heavy grade plastic, they go to gather really easy and they've got a lockable lid so the idea behind burying this deep in the ground is not only to stop the vermin from getting in but it's really to regulate the temperature so I really try and teach people that these are a really good option during the summer 
So use your other worm farms during the winter and build your numbers up so that when it comes to summertime, we can get out and we can get them into the, into the garden where we want them to be. There's lots of holes so that worms can go in and out. The only thing is with this is you really need to keep the water up to them. But that's alright because you'll be watering your garden at the same time. And that's the beauty of these. These were designed really on a permaculture principle of really getting and doing your composting in the place. It's almost just a sit there and forget about it. You have a little bit of care and just remember that they're there, right? These are a really, really good way to get worms into your garden. Now, what we're going to do is I'm quickly just going to show you how easy it is really to get one of these going. Now, I've just dug a hole. The idea is that we want to have it mostly filled all the way up, at least to, to the top part. So that really just stops the sun from getting onto the bare plastic and heating it up. So we're going to just put some soil around the bottom to make it difficult for any critters to get in and now one of the other things that I really like to do is build the habitat around these worm farms so we'll be feeding these with our food scraps but we really want the worms to be moving in and out and getting into our garden we want them laying eggs and we want them to be growing up in this really nice environment so I've got some some soil I've got some wood chip compost and I'm just going to shovel this around Alright, so we've got some bits of old gardening grass and you've got to remember that because we're using compost worms here this still is a worm farm designed for compost worms. Now what's going to happen is those worms are going to leave their castings around but it's going to encourage the native worms to start moving up through the area because essentially that's what they're, they're feasting on. So we just finished off with a bit of straw, a bit of old grassy hay. We'll get the hose, we'll give it all a good wet down. And then later on I'll come back once it's all wet and nice and moist, I'll put the worms in and then we'll start feeding. It really is as simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys. What we've got coming up in the next video is the final video of the series and that is video three where Peter takes you to show another type of worm farm on his farm which is a dog poo worm farm and these work really good actually as an underground worm farm as well. But there's a few tips and tricks that Peter shares with you and I'm sure if you're into that type of thing and you want to learn more about worm farms and worms you're going to pick up plenty in that next video that's coming up. Indy, come on. Good girl. Yeah. Good girl. Come on.